Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. You're listening to Newcastle Fast FM. Welcome to Reads, the show aimed at getting listeners interested in and into reading more. The first revelation and instructions to our beloved Prophet وسلم, was to read. So let's read, think, and talk about books and sources of information and knowledge for the next hour, inshallah. Remember that you can listen to the Reads show live or recordings on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Hanat, and I'll be co-presenting today's show with, uh, with, with Amna. Uh, this is our first episode this Ramadan. We also have Siddiqa as our guest in the studio today. Today, we'll be discussing Islamic faith and basics. And as usual, we'll be starting with the most important book. Amna will be reading some relevant translated verses from the Quran, inshallah. Bismillah, Amna. In the name of Allah, the kind, the caring, all praises are for Allah, the Lord of the wills, the kind, the caring, the master of judgment day. We worship you alone and from you alone we seek help. Guide us on the straight path and the path of those you favoured, not those of you, those who are condemned, nor the misguided ones. So that is Surah Fatiha um, and that is the opening Surah of the Quran. Um, and it is also the surah that we recite at the beginning of Salah. Um, and what are your thoughts, um, Sister Sadiqa? Assalamu alaikum. I think it's beautiful that you started up with the opening of the Quran at the opening of our show as well, because it does encompass a lot. So you mentioned there in the translation that you're praising Allah the master of the universe and that he has mercy and kindness for us all so it's a reminder that you said we're saying it every day in our salah we're starting by praising our creator and it's also a bit of a dua as well because you said you are the one that we worship and we ask for help and that um you seek the path of those who that you please with and not the path of those who go astray Absolutely. Um, like you said, it is a dua that as well, which is good as well in the sense that it reminds us of the essence. Um, Sister Hanat? Yes, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Um, I think uh, Yusuf, uh, Yusuf uh, Ali has a wonderful uh, introduction to Surah Al-Fatiha and um, to add to the fact that this is one of Islamic's basics. He says, first comes that beautiful surah, the opening chapter of seven verses, rightly called the essence of the book. It teaches us the perfect prayer, for if we can pray aright, it means that we have some knowledge of Allah and his attributes and of his relations to us and his creation, which includes ourselves, that we glimpse the source from which we come, and that final goal, which is our spiritual destiny, under Allah's true judgment, then we offer ourselves to Allah and we seek his light. Prayer is the heart of religion and faith. But how shall we pray? What words shall convey the yearnings of our miserable, ignorant hearts to the know of all? Is it worthy of him or of our spiritual nature to ask for vanities or even for such physical needs as our daily bread? The inspired one tossed us a prayer that sums up our faith, our hope, and our aspiration in things that matter. We praise him for his creation and his cherishing care. We offer him worship and ask his guidance. And we know the straight from the crooked path by the light of his grace that emanates the righteous. So I think going back, um, Sister Amna, definitely um, the best place to start renewing our faith is with Surah Al-Fatiha, and we do this at least 17 times every day. Um, and I think that's something, you know, to start with, something to highlight. And, you know, rightly said, uh, I think you've started at the best place, mashallah. Yeah, um, I completely agree. It's definitely, like, it translates to the opening, so it only makes sense, really. Um, I can go on to Surah Bukra and um, read Ayah, 177 on righteousness next um, and that goes like 
this, righteousness is not simply turning your face towards the east or the west during the prayer. Rather, righteousness is believing in Allah, the last day, the angels, the revealed books and the prophets, spending wealth for the love of Allah on relatives, orphans, the needy, travellers, beggars and free and slaves performing prayer and praying zakat, fulfilling any contracts one has entered and being patient in illness, misfortune and in times of hardship. Those who, don't, those who do these things are the truthful people and they are mindful of Allah. So that's um, Surah al Baqarah, the second Surah, the longest one as well. Um, and I think that beautifully puts as well, um, again, what Islam is like the main, um, it, like it's, it just really summarizes it all for us. Um, so yes, yeah, Sister Sadiqa, what are your thoughts? on that ayah? I agree with you. It's a brilliant summary because and it even highlights you can't just simply sit there and you know, sit there for yourself and almost be selfish thinking, okay, I'm praying, I'm I'm doing this, I'm righteous. It encompasses everything. You've got to look after the people around you, the world around you. Um being a well rounded person is part of being a righteous Muslim, looking after the needy and all the other things you mentioned are all parts of um, our faith and believing in the angels and the messengers and following, you know, everything, not just looking after yourself. So I like that. And I like how uh, you mentioned it in Surah Baqarah as well. Again, towards the beginning of the Quran, it's really laying down the foundation. Absolutely. Um, Sister Hanat, um, how, how do you feel about that ayah? Uh, mashallah, I believe you both have, um, you know, summarized it well. And I think that's something to, to realize um, deep down our Islamic faith and the basics is not just about that we pray and all that. It has to be from within. The righteousness is, is very important that we believe and do righteousness is what will make us successful. Uh, and this is details the basics of belief that we believe in Allah the last day the angels the book these are the you know the um the 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 basics and you know alhamdulillah reminding prophets the believers um you know this this is this is important um i think we should still go ahead and um maybe read one or two more ayahs from quran before we move on to hadith inshallah of course um so We've got um, another ayah. Um, I created jinn and human beings only to worship me. Again, this ayah reminds us of our purpose and like why we were created. It's just very simply put, black and white for us, alhamdulillah. Um, and that is from Surah Al-Dahriyat. Um, any input on that, Sister Sadiqa or Sister Hanat? It is the answer to the big question, isn't it? Like you said, it's quite clear and direct that we're, we're just here to worship Allah, the human on the jinn. And although it is um, a direct and a short statement, it's in our it's in our Quran, so everything else kind of revolves around it, like the way that you know, we're learning about the souls of the prophets, the way that we're learning to worship and solidify our faith in Allah. It's all because we're here to worship him. So it's a very important statement and I think it's um like you say, like a basic for everybody. Absolutely. I think um you made a good point there seeing that it answers like a very big question for us. Um because oftentimes people do like question what is my purpose here? And that is just a brilliant way of just putting it very clearly for us to refer back to, alhamdulillah, Sister Hanat. Yes, mashallah, I definitely agree. I think, you know, um, sometimes we do get distracted, don't we? And, you know, it, it, in various, various um, stages of our lives, you know, we do get distracted. Um, and I think this is one pertinent ayah that brings us back to the core in everything we do at the end of the day, it's to worship Allah, to seek his pleasure and to do it in accordance with the way he has instructed and, and sent through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
And I think if we miss that objective or our intentions are not right, then we, we risk deviating from our purpose, you know. Alhamdulillah, Sister Amna. Yes, so we can move on to Surah al Bayana, the clear proof, um, Ayah 5, that is. Um, all they were commanded was worship Allah sincerely, turn away from false gods, establish their prayer, and pay the zakat. That is the religion of truth. Again, similarly to the last ayah, I think um, it's again just reminding us um, of our, our purpose. Um, and also it's it's reminding us that yes, we worship Allah, um, but it's not just words we're speaking, similarly to, to Surah Bukhara where it's saying it's not just turning your head um, to the east and west, um, there's more to it, it's sincerity. Um, and it, you know, it, it touches upon the other pillars such as the gut as well. Um, and we've got a comment here by Sister Ikram. I love this surah and how it also emphasizes the reward for following our religion. Again, brilliant point. Um, like, yes, like Sister Ikram has said, that's exactly what it does. Um, Sister Sadiqa? I like how in, in this um, part that you've read out, it says about um, the false gods, because that's something about Islam and our belief in Allah that is very strict and clear in this religion that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. So in telling us to abandon the false gods, which is what many other religions have fallen under, it's, it's telling you this is what you don't do and now this is what you do. You establish your prayer and your zakat as well. And again, they're both means of um, getting closer to Allah, worshiping Him and gaining reward. Yeah, absolutely. I love how it, like you said, um, your point about contrasting with other religions. It is what differentiates us. And, you know, it reminds us we're not just like any other religion. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a brilliant point. Thank you, Sister Sadiqa. Sister Hanat? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Um, you know, uh, I think this is one of my favorite ayahs. I think sometimes it just... You, you just feel like, you know, you're being drawn here and there and you begin to wonder, you know, what's going on, what's up to, um, I mean, what you, you're going up to. And then, you know, sometimes in many Noafil, uh, I've been so tired, I'm thinking, oh no. And then I just decide, you know, if I'm going to use one ayah in this raka'a, it's going to be this ayah. You know, we have not been commanded to do more than that, to worship Allah with sincere devotion to praise him and pray, to draw near him, and, you know, to be a service to Allah's creatures, you know, by by what we know, what we have, um, our qualities. This is how we, you know, we worship him. Uh, and if we're sincere in that, you know, um, that is the religion, that is the correct way, Biramatullah, and we shall be successful. Um, Jazakallah khair, Sister Amna. I think that, that those basic ayahs reminding us of our purpose actually feed into a few hadith that uh, I'd like to read. So going back to Islamic faith and basics, if I may proceed with a hadith, um, reading from the book of belief, uh, the hadith of uh, Al-Bukhari, we have a chapter on the statement of the Prophet وسلم, that Islam is based on five principles. Narrated Ibn Umar radiallahu an, the Prophet وسلم, said, Islam is based on five. One, to testify la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadur rasulullah. None has the word to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Two, iqam salah to offer the, 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 uh, the salah, the, the five daily prayers, dutifully and perfectly. Three, to pay zakah. Four, to perform hajj. And five, to observe sa'un. That's fast during the month of Ramadan. And there's a bit of a comment on that, that each and every Muslim, male or female, is obliged to offer salah regularly five times a day at the specified times. Um, it also talks about the zakah, um, that it's about a fixed proportion of our wealth um, on each and every kind that is liable to zakah. And this is something paid yearly for the benefit of the poor, you know. 
um, when we offer salah, we should offer it as the Prophet وسلم, offered it. You know, again, that's what makes it valid. So these are basically the five pillars of faith, and you know, everyone can literally read them off their lips. But um, it's how we take action and act upon them. I mean, Sister Siddiqua, what do you think? Yeah, just like you say, they are the five pillars, and it's how we take action about them. So you, you mentioned the Shahada, that we have belief in Allah and the Prophet Muhammad as his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then you went on to talk about Salah, but it's about performing it dutifully, so to a, to a standard and to a level. And I think that goes for um, all the pillars of Islam, really. It's not just about the act of carrying them out. We need to put our hearts and our energy fully into it and remember that Allah is watching us and that we're only doing it for him. Yes, mashallah. Um, I mean, we have a comment here from Sister, N I, oh, sorry for assuming, uh, Nazima Khatun. Um, you know, she mentions here, when you're faced with daily challenges in life, it helps you realize that nothing in relation to the bigger picture. It stops you getting bogged down and wasting energy on things that, that matter. I mean, absolutely. I think, you know, many things will make people come around. But we have to remember that in this life, even when we say we believe in Allah, we are Muslims, we observe Salah, you know, we're human. And it's not, it's, not, it's not surprising, it's not unusual, it's not uncommon for us to deviate a bit in what we're doing and or in our actions or in our routines and things like that. You, we do have to take, um, take um, you know, make, make, make some kind of reflection from time to time to check that we're on the right. And that's why Allah SWT has sent us books. That's why um, we have reminders. That's why we're asked several, several times in the Quran to reflect. Um, another comment, um, Sister Ikram has said, yes, Allah loves the performance of obligatory deeds the most. I mean, these are basics of our faith, um, you know, that we've been commanded. And she continues, um, we should spend time to do them well and with thought. Absolutely, mashallah. And, and that's the thing, you know, it's about doing it right, doing it perfectly, and that's following what the Quran has instructed, and most importantly, the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll quickly read a few related to that, a few hadith related to that. So we have one regarding the deeds of faith, which Sister Ikram has, you know, suggested, and Nazima, uh, narrated Abu Huraira, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, faith consists of more than 60 subdivisions or branches. And al haya um, which means self-respect, modesty, and honor, is part of faith. So this is another basic. Uh, the Muslim is one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongues and hands. And I think this is very pertinent in Ramadan. The Prophet wasallam said, a Muslim is one who avoids harming Muslim with his tongue and hand. And a muhajir, the Im immigrant, is the one who gives up all that Allah is forbidden. So, you know, a lot of people talk about jihad and, you know, but they always, a lot of people just are suddenly inclined to think about war. But actually, a lot of the basics in our belief, the struggle is from within, is within our hearts. Sister Amna, any comments of the, on these hadith? Yeah, um, like you said, it's, a lot, it's very relevant to this month of Ramadan as well. I think often um, it's easy to forget about our tongue um, when we're so focused on our outwards actions. Um, and it's a good reminder in this hadith that, you know, we're responsible for, you know, the words we say as well. I just think it's a really, you know, interesting point to like ponder upon really. Yes, alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, I think going to other few basics, uh, Jazakallah Karen for your comment, going into other basics, I think will also get us to, to think a bit more. So for example, um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was a man asked him, whose Islam is good? Or what sort of deeds of Islam are good? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, to feed others, to greet those whom you know, and those whom you don't know. So that's really spreading the salam. So that's one basic thing of our Islamic faith. I think another thing, and that's the wonderful thing about Islam, is we're not only told what is right, 
where we're also pointed to what is wrong so that we avoid it. And I think one hadith uh, here in the Book of Belief uh, is on the signs of a hypocrite. Narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the signs of a hypocrite are three. When he speaks, he tells a lie. Whenever he promises, he always breaks his promise. And if you trust him, he proves to be dishonest. So for example, if you keep something as a trust with him, he will not return it. Um, similar, again, uh, that helps us with our faith is to establish the, the night prayer, tahajud, and also, um, you know, observing the, the night of Nailatul Qadr is part of faith. And the hadith or related to this is uh, narrated Abu Hurairah, and the Prophet said, whoever establishes the prayers on the night of Qadr out of sincere faith and hoping to, Allah's, to, to attain Allah's rewards, then all his past sins will be forgiven. Um, I mean, these are all the basics that we, we, we're just running through as Muslims. Um, one more basic I think we should look at is to is part of faith to establish the prayers, the Nawafil prayers during the nights of Ramadan. And Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, whoever established the prayers during the night of Ramadan, so we're looking at Tarweeh now, faithfully out of sincere faith and hoping to Allah, uh, obtain Allah's rewards, all his past sins will for, be forgiven. And again, similar hadiths are, are there in the Book of Belief that to observe the fast during the month of Ramadan sincerely for Allah's reward only is part of faith. I mean, Sister Siddiqua, did you want to make any comments on these um, um, hadith in the Book of Belief? Yeah, there's um, a beautiful theme amongst it of, of generally being a sincere and good person and hoping truly for reward. It's not just about the actions like we've touched on before. There's a lot more to it, like you said earlier, about haya, avoiding harming other Muslims, having the struggle from within, feeding each other, greeting each other, not being a hypocrite, not lying. There's a lot of characteristics of being a good person in general. And then it comes that comes with worshipping Allah. And like you mentioned with the night prayer and the Nawahal prayers during the night, that it's all out of sincere faith, hoping for Allah's reward. So he's looking at you on the inside as well as what you're doing on the outside. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, Sister Amna, did you have any comments on the hadiths we've read from the Book of Belief so far? I think Sister Sadiq has put it quite well, actually. Um, it is about the intention. And we've got um, Sister Ikram Agreen as well in the comments there. Um, with the intention, I think that really is like a, like you say, it's the basic of our faith, isn't it? Um, it's not just about the outward actions, it's about how, you, how you're feeling, what your intentions are, that matter. And Sister Ikram's also said that people often overlook intention, which can, which does happen, um, whereas Islam reminds us to keep our in, intention intact, really. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's um it's a very good point. Alhamdulillah. Yes, uh, Alhamdulillah, that is correct, and I think we are going to be touching that in some other books or reads we're going to be doing on the show uh, in a short while. I think I'm going to round off uh, some hadith from the Book of Faith. Um, so, here are a, a few more uh, to remind us of basics as Muslims. The fear of a believer that his good deeds may be annulled without his knowledge. Narrated Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Abusing a Muslim is fast is fusuk, so an evil doing, and killing him is kufr. Narrated Ubaidah ibn Asmi, As, Asami, Asamit radiallahu an, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa went out to inform the people about Laylatul Qadr. But there happened a quarrel between two men among the Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I came out to inform you about the night of Al-Qadr, the date, but as so and so quarreled, its knowledge was taken away and may, maybe it was better for you. Now look for it in the seventh, the ninth and the fifth, in bracket of the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And I mean, this hadith is just a simple um, 
it's just it, it's just a scenario about how the prophet actually forgot um, what date exactly was the night of Leilatul Qadr um, because of you know a misdeed that was going on at the time, and and I think in our lives as we if we pay attention reflect we find that sometimes by not letting things go by not letting things roll over you or bounce off you you find yourself dragged in and distracted from what is actually more important and in, in fact you may even forget your purpose or not end up attaining a purpose i think this is quite a basic um you know instruction to us as muslims there is also that about belief uh, from the angel jibril narrated abu huraira and one day the prophet وسلم, was sitting out for the people there came a man and asked what is faith? Allah's Messenger وسلم, replied, Faith is to believe in Allah, His angels, the meeting with Him, His messengers, and to believe in the resurre resurrection. Then he further asked, What is Islam? Allah's Messenger وسلم, replied, To worship Allah alone and no one else, to perform salah perfectly, to pay the zakah, and to observe sound, the fast, during the month of Ramadan. Then he further asked, what is Ihsan? Allah's Messenger وسلم, replied, to worship Allah as wajal, as if you see him. And if you cannot achieve this state of devotion, then you must consider that he is looking at you. Then he further asked, when will the hour be established? Allah's Messenger وسلم, replied, the answerer has no better knowledge than the questioner. But I will inform you about his portents. When a slave lady gives birth to her master, when the shepherds of black camels start competing with others in the construction of higher buildings, and the hour is one of the five things which nobody knows except Allah. Then the Prophet ﷺ recited, Verily, Allah with him alone is the knowledge of the hour. He sends down the rain and knows that which is in the wombs. No person knows what he will earn tomorrow, and no person knows in what land he will die. Verily, Allah is all knower, all aware of all things. Then that man left the Prophet. The Prophet وسلم, asked for him to be called back, but they could not see anything of the man. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, That was Jibril السلام, who came to teach the people about their religion. Sister Amna, any comments? Again, it touches upon. Um, you know the five pillars the it answers big questions in islam for us and you know it's it it's the prophet's words it's what he how he responded to such questions and you know it's it's put very clearly for us it's not something that you can dispute upon and, and with the last um um hadith that you mentioned as well in terms of um our prophet peace be upon him f um forgetting when light al -Qadr was um was due to that dispute again that links back to your words and um, and your tongue and like how you use it and why it's such an important thing in our faith as well to you know be mindful of what we say and how we say things i've got a comment here by sister Ikram as well saying allah shows also shows allah is the all-knowing again it, it really does um we've got all the you know, we've got the answers there for us in the Quran, in the Hadith. Yes, mashallah. I think um, I just seen uh, a Hadith, and I think is a good way to end our reading of uh, Al Bukhari's uh, Book of Belief today. Uh, it talks about the superiority of that person who leaves all doubtful things for the sake of his religion. I think this is a basic thing we Muslims really should be doing. And narrated Ibn Bashir an, I heard Allah's Messenger وسلم, saying, both legal and illegal things are evident, but in between them are doubtful things, and most of the people have no knowledge about them. So whoever saves himself from these doubtful things, he saves his religion and his honor. And whoever indulges in these doubtful things is like a shepherd who grazes his animals near the, the pasture of someone else. And at any moment, he's liable to get in it. So he will he breach um, his boundaries. So beware, every king 
has a hima and the hima of Allah as wajal on the earth is, is he legal things. So those things which are haram or forbidden. Beware, there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it becomes good, the whole body becomes good. But if it gets spoiled, the whole body gets spoiled. And that is the heart. I think this is a, a, a good uh, note to end the reading of Bukhari. We do find a lot of people concentrate on what is not clear or where there's discrepancies or where there's um, you know different opinions on a matter. And I think that hadith tells us we should leave the doubt, be it doubtful things for the sake of Allah. Um, you know, we, we shouldn't concentrate on things that bring us disagreement or where there's no clear answer. I mean, Sister Siddiqua, any final comments on the hadith we've done? I really liked the metaphor about the sheep grazing close to another's land because it does encompass this doubtful, this gray area. The more that we fall into it, it, it can be a slippery slope into the things that aren't permissible. And I think that just explains it so well because when things are doubtful, you're, how far away you stay from them or how, how, how much you allow yourself to get involved with them will be a reflection of your iman. Yes, mashallah, yes. I think that's very correct. I mean, we even see it in common practice, don't we? There are many places we go to um, where you have a boundary or where we stay, there's a boundary. You have a neighbor. I mean, th th I remember one time we had our neighbor come around because we'd watered our grass and uh, <laughs> it was a sprinkler. And the, the thing had sprinkled water across the fence. And they, were, they, they came right down to complain. Um, you know, and not to talk of if you had animals and then they go and start eating the grass of, um, you know, uh, your neighbor's uh, pasture where, you know, your neighbor has animals, you know, it's bound to cause problems. So definitely, I, I think that example, you know, is, is, is very relevant, it's very pertinent, you know, and it transcends time. And we have a comment, you know, from uh, Ikram. She says, yes, we should leave them as Allah is the only one that knows of these doubtful things. And we Muslims shouldn't quarrel or worry over what we don't know. Yes, mashallah, I think that's very, that's very true. You know, we put in so much effort into what we don't have control over. Um, I'll move on to Sister Siddiqua. I mean, we've been reading from the Quran and Hadith. You've been listening to the Reef Show on Newcastle Fast FM. Um, we were, t we're talking about uh, reads, sources of knowledge, information and books that could help us with our Islamic faith and the basics of uh, Islamic faith. Um, so, so, Siddiqua, did you want to suggest any books, uh, pamphlets, magazines, anything that you, you think may help in this way? Um, actually, I did want to suggest an audio source. I know the show is called Read, but I was just thinking for the times where you can't always sit down with some literature, there's an app that um, I've downloaded which I, I really wanted to recommend called Muslim Central. And it's full of lectures and talks from a catalogue of speakers. And you can follow their series and episodes. You can even subscribe to a speaker or download their talk. And you can save what you've listened to, where you're up to. You can save your favourites. And a benefit of being able to stream like this is that you don't have to worry about having a screen um, or having something to look at. If you're occupied with something physically with your hands, say, for example, you're cooking in Ramadan, or your mind can wander, it can be handy having something to be able to listen to and to engage you at the same time as well. So that was just one um, reference that I wanted to give. And actually, on the subject of apps, um, you can get a few apps on your phones with daily reminders of hadith and dua as well. I don't know if you guys like using apps on your phone for this kind of thing. Yes, mashallah. I mean, the show is called Reads, but um, it was really about people getting to reading, talking, thinking about books and sources of knowledge and information. So mashallah, we actually do live in an era where um, all these things are in various forms, formats. They're easily accessible and, uh, you know, they're made to appeal to almost every preference, every convenience and every person. Um, and definitely, I, I agree. I think having an app, that will enable you to do this easily. I mean, time is so precious these days. And these days, I also find there's a cost implication, um, you know, to, to, to buy a book. 
um, may cost you, set you back a few pounds. And, and then, but you may actually find that the book is accessible online for free. Um, and as you say, audio is very important. I mean, if you're working, if you're a student, if you're a mother, if you're a wife, you know, I mean, irrespective of our, of our role, um, I think having an app, having, you know, audio books, uh, access to audio books, it enables you to actually catch up and increase your knowledge um, without, you know, having to sit down. I mean, we are meant to be exercising, for example. You can do this while you exercise, while you're at the gym. Um, Sister Anna, did you have any suggestions or comments on Sister Siddika's uh, suggestions? Yeah, I have actually used Muslim Central before, and I too would recommend that. Um, even if you don't have the app, um, you can access it on for free on um, Google Podcasts. Um, and it's got a variety of different speakers, so you can search for a, um, a speaker that you prefer on um, a certain topic at different lengths as well. So I completely agree. I think um, they, they are really, um, it's, it, it's quite um, a wide range of different um, topics that are covered. Um, and then we've also got um, a comment here by Khan. Any authentic app specifically for Hadith? that we could recommend. Um, we have got Muslim Pro um, that we've um, looked at, which does um, touch upon different, like it has different um, like parts within the app. So you've got like um, the prayer times, translations of the Quran um, and Tajweed as well as, I believe the Hadiths are in there as well. Um, but Muslim Pro is kind of like, basically what all like, similar apps are like um but it's, i believe it's the most popular one um and they've got it's called muslim pro ramadan 2021 um if you search that up on either the app store or the play store um so yeah um i think like you said sister hana it is um really handy especially um in this day and age because we all live in a quick lifestyle so it is good to just be able to just press play and just have a listen because we don't always get that time to sit down and read. Yes, definitely. I agree. Um, you know, I mean, what, what do our listeners think? Do you have a favorite uh, app that helps you keep with your Islamic faith, that help you ha helps you with keeping with the Islamic basics? I mean, yes, Sister Amna, yes, Sister Siddiqua, Muslim Central, Muslim Pro, I mean, they they remind you. They let you know when it's time for solar, you know, um, and things like that. I mean, personally, I I haven't. Uh, I don't have Muslim Central app or Muslim Pro app. Um, we do have a comment here. Um, someone says, I think Ikram says, I think Muslim Pro is good for du'as, but not necessarily for anything else. So that's her opinion. Um, they think it's good for du'as because it's divided into sections, so you can find the du'a that you need. Um, but again, it's, it's up to people. I, I, I mean, I'm not very much a techie, techie person. I'm someone who loves the hard copy of things. Um, but I am getting into it, I must say, because of the time factor. Um, my favorite app at the moment uh, and it's, uh, is Quran Tafsir. Um, and I think this is because it enables me to read Quran on the go enables me to play Quran on the go. Uh, it, it can remind me about the prayer times wherever I am. It will reset and, and based you know, on my location, it will tell me when the solar time is. Um, it has the translation. Um, and if you wanted it to play back to you, you can play um, the, the Arabic uh, on its own, or you can play the Arabic and the translation. And then you have so many reciters as well. Um, you know, from, I mean, there's several, I think there are about 40 reciters, different reciters now on it. Um, and then I think they've, over the years, they have up, up, um, updated it to have color codes. So that helps as well with recognizing words and helping with Tajweed. So at the moment, that's, that's kind of my main app. Um, there was a question on the comments about which apps do people recommend? Um, and I think um, th there's so many. I think you just have to check. Um, you know, there, there are hadith apps. There, there is a hadith. There is a an app for Bukhari, I believe. Um, you also have a ha ha an app for 
Islamic Hadith in general. There is also Islamic Stories app, which will tell you different stories. I think there are over a hundred stories, uh, which are from the Hadith. Um, and I, I found that one very interesting for my children. Um, when we used to travel many years ago, not now during COVID, um, but when we used to travel, we used to read stories from the iPad and, and it was just because of that app we had. Um, so yes, uh, Khan was the one who asked uh, about authentic apps. I think, I don't know about you, Siddiqua and um, Amna. Um, I'm not very techy, so that's why I'm asking you both for your opinions. But um, how do you kind of determine, not just about apps, but books and all that, what so to, I mean, in inverted commas, authentic that uh, Khan is asking, how do you kind of, what guides you to determine what may be authentic and what is not? That's a really good question, Sister Hanat. And I think um, it shows the importance of us as, you know, Muslims, as brothers and sisters, communicating with each other and going off recommendations. And you can look at reviews of things for apps and books as well and get a good idea from there. I think a lot of the sources that we use have been recommended from someone that you know or trust. Um, I know there's times where you go out of your way to, to get something, but again, looking at the reviews helps a lot. And to answer the question, any authentic app, specifically for Hadith, you recommend? There's one called Daily Hadith, which I really like because it does have the references after each Hadith that it gives you. And I think um, that's a good sign that it's authentic as well from your apps that each time you get a notification in, or a dua or a hadith that it says exactly where it's from so if you're if you think something's pretty you can actually go and check it if you wanted um but the app daily hadith i like because it gives a notification every morning as well and you just open it up read your hadith for the day and that's it your that's your hadith done for that day and like i say it's always referenced as well and you can flick, flick back through the days so for example, today I got one, a, a nice short hadith, um, which said, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, he who believes in Allah and the last day must either speak good or remain silent. And at, at the end, it says it's from Muslim. So sometimes the hadith will be short and simple like that. Some days will be longer. But at the end of each one, they do say where it's come from, which I really like. I completely agree with you, Sister Satika, and um, I think references is really important and obviously um, it reassures you that, you know, it is authentic. Um, another thing I could I could suggest is that you ask maybe your um, imam if if they're techie, if they know um, about the app. Um, additionally, you can do your own, you know, background research, looking at reviews as well. I find it's helpful on the App Store or on Google Play just to see what other people like think about the app. Um, another app that I would really recommend is um, the Akeen Institute's app. Um, so basically when I first downloaded the app, it introduced me with a challenge, which was to, I basically said my own interests, wh whether it's um, history, politics, Sharia, there's different, different topics. Um, you basically say what your interests, is, interests are and it like, adjust the like I guess you could say algorithm so that your interests are what pops up on the feed and then you can take part in challenges with friends so you basically watch or read something um on that topic um and you answer questions so it's kind of like quizzing you and then you basically send that link to your friend to see if they can beat your points kind of thing so it's quite it's quite interesting and fun like that as well. So I would definitely recommend Yakin Institute. And of course they have their usual like um lectures and like articles on there which are really useful. Yes, mashallah. I think um I mean we're talking about um reads here, books, you know, anything, any source of information. And I think the reality is um for, for, for most people now in today's day and age, their sources of information are online or on the web or electronically, you know, by some means, uh, especially if you live in the West where you won't, you won't really have this giant library next door to the masjid to go and go and fish and look through and ask the librarian. So definitely, I think um, for me, 
<laughs> going back to the basics and not being very techy, I, I tend to have a look at reviews. So if I wanted to pick up a book from Amazon, I will look at the reviews. If I wanted to go somewhere, I'll look at reviews. And, and one example <laughs> comes to mind. Um, when me and the children were in Berlin a few years ago, I went there for work. Um, we, we wanted to find the nearest masjid. And, um, you know, different places came up. We just literally, you know, did nearest masjid on the Google Maps thingy uh, app. And, um, you know, different. I'm like, oh, that one's very close. But, you know, we looked at the review and <laughs> it was very poor. I was surprised that um, a masjid will have such poor reviews like one. Uh, and I think one person said, if I could have given this, this place a zero, I would have done. Um, and you read the reviews and some people were saying, this is definitely not a masjid. Don't go there. Um, one said, this is um, um, uh, fitna and haram, don't go there, um, you know, um, the, the imam is a female or it's more like a museum being run by a female or who, who wasn't a Muslim or something, you know, so um, I think reviews still play a part, um, you know, especially if they're validated. Um, but yes, um, just looking at the reviews actually guided us to the masjid. Um, uh, to find, you know, what, what it, it what, where we could pray or, you know, the, the right place to pray, you know, alhamdulillah. Uh, we have a comment from uh, Ruweda. She says she likes sunnah.com. It's a great website, mashallah, many authentic hadith. Yeah, definitely. I think I have been searching for some answers once before. And um, yes, I have been on sunnah.com a few times. Um, and just going back, uh, for those who are not very techy, um, other books, pamphlets, you know, things, sources of knowledge, when you're thinking about Islamic faith and basics, you can look at. I think one classic book is Imam Nawawi's Kitab, um, The 40 Hadith. I mean, The 40 Hadith of Imam Nawawi is, is a very popular book, and mashallah, Allah has blessed it to transcend time. It is accessible free uh, as an online PDF. You can read it online at sunnah.com, which was recommended by um, one of our listeners, Sister Rueda. Um, you can purchase it from shops. Um, you can get it on Amazon for less than ten pounds. Um, it's only got forty-eight pages, you know. And um, yeah, definitely, it, it is something you can read yourself during this Ramadan. You, you can summarize, read a summary of it. You can buy it as a gift for young and old, you know. So that's definitely one I will suggest. Um, by the same classical author, Imam Nawawi, um, you have Riyadh Salihin. Um, I mean, this is another book that transcends time. Um, it is, it is, it, it to me, it's almost like a bigger version of um, the Forty Hadith uh, book. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think, Siddiqa and Amna. Um, can you think of any classical reads, or you know, that or, or have you read uh, Nawawi's books? I think they're excellent suggestions, Sister Hanat, um, because. As well, when you've got like a set number of hadith, or you know, when you got to start somewhere, and it's it's good to start with like really basic, strong, and like I say, authentic hadith before you move on to, you know, the wider ranges. So I think that's an excellent place to start. And I know um some someone in the comments has been saying like they want to become an expert in hadith and asking these kinds of questions. But I think you have to start somewhere, and that is a really good one, Sister Hanaf. I like yeah, that recommendation for the listeners. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think that's a great place to start. Um, like I myself haven't read um, his works, but I think classical texts can often get overshadowed. And I think it's a good reminder, Alhamdulillah. So thank you for sharing that, Sister Hannah. Alhamdulillah. Um, I think, um, I mean, thinking about books again, um, I think a contemporary book was um, I, uh, it's something that is also popular among Muslims. It's called um, A Thousand Sunnah by Day and Night. I think that's a, a, a nice small book, um, similar to Imam Nawawi, but it's more contemporary. Um, and it just goes over again, things that we can do. I mean, these are things that refresh us, our Islamic faith, um, and you know, take us back to the basics of, of practicing Islam. Um, and I'll read, um, you know, a bit of that actually. Um, and it says, um, how can we gain the love of Allah, the Almighty? You know, 
it says the most important thing in the daily life of any Muslim is following the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in all of his actions, deeds, and sayings in order to organize this life according to the prophetic sunnah. From morning to the evening, uh, Thun al-Masir said that one of the signs of loving Allah, the Almighty, is following the sunnah of his Prophet, peace be upon him, in his morals, deeds, orders, and actions. Allah the Almighty also said, if you should love Allah, then follow me. So that's follow the Prophet. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. And Allah is forgiving and uh, merciful. Al-Hasan al-Basri explained the above mentioned verse saying, the sign of their love to Allah is to follow the Sunnah, peace be upon him, because the rank of the believer can be measured by the extent of following the Prophet, peace be upon him. Therefore, as much as he is, he, he is following the Sunnah, Allah will give him a higher rank. So this book, A Thousand Sunnah, um, by per day and night, you know, it's is basically a collection of daily sunnahs of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you know, and you know, it's something that if we apply to our daily life, you know, to our last breath, we are alive, we will be successful. Um, do we have any comments, sisters? Siddika, Amna? There's actually um an app version of that as well, just come back to the app. Um it's a bit of a simplified version, but it is there for if you wanted like a quick easy access to it. Um and I think it is on available online as a PDF too. So it's very accessible and um, it's a really good um, source of being able to add in these sunnah acts in your day-to-day -day life. Because like you say, um, it will help you gain the love of Allah and get closer to him as well as Allah. Yeah, it is um, available as a PDF. Um, that's the version I've got. But it's, it's good that they've um, branched out to apps as well, like you said, um, with like the convenience of it. But just looking at the PDF of the book itself, it's it's quite easy to follow as well. Like it's got like um, in the contents, sinners of weight enough um, from wearing shoes. And it just goes on from day to night. Um, so it's it's really easy to follow, really simple to read. So, um, yeah, I, I too would recommend that. Alhamdulillah. Um, I think um, I, I didn't mention this, but yes, Sister Amna mentioned the Yakin Institute uh, and about their app. Um, you can actually watch online and all on their YouTube channels. Um, and I think my favorite thing about Yakin Institute's um, podcast or videos or, you know, khutbahs is that they're very short. I mean, they may have a series, like there's one series they have, which I'm listening to at the moment, it's called Guidebook to God. Um, it's about 30 episodes, so you know you could listen to one every day of Ramadan. Um, and the first starts with The Beauty of Faith. Uh, it's by Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim. Um, but each episode is only about 10 minutes or less. Um, so, you know, it actually keeps you engaged, especially now where, you know, our, inten our attention spans are, like, are quite short. Um, the other ha they also have other series like Five Pillars Made Plain by Sheikh Abdullah Aduro. So, you know, that's 30 episodes as well. And each is only five minutes. So these are available on the Yakin Institute website via their app or, you know, via YouTube. Um, I think just to mention something regarding children before we go. Um, with regards to helping them develop or you know feed into their Islamic faith and the basics. Um, the Quran challenge game, um, that's by Good Words Kids. Uh, there's five pillars game, you know, you can uh, put the children on, on the floor and you know go through, they ask questions and you know for each answer, que question answered correctly, they get a mark or a point. You know, it, it seems a bit competitive, but you know, it can be stimulating for children to learn about our Islamic faith and basics. Um, any final comments, Siddiqa, Amna? Yeah, I think like, that's... Sorry, oh, go, sorry go on. It's okay, after you. <laughs> I, I think that's a really good point, getting children involved with games, because kids love games, and why not learn while you're enjoying yourself? Um, there's also a, a Hadith trivia calendar I wanted to suggest as well. So every day of the year there's a hadith but the way that it's worded there's an element of competition where each entry is asked as a question about a hadith 
and then you have to rack, rack your brains and see if you can answer it or complete the hadith. And again, the hadith are all referenced as well, so that you know that they're authentic. Um, and it's a nice, regular, consistent, small activity just to switch on your brain. Like today's hadith was a, was a really simple one. It said, on which side of, of the bed would the prophet lie to sleep on him while resting at night? Um, and then the answer is obviously right, the right side. But some of them are, are much more comprehensive. Like yesterday, they asked to name two of the ten kinds of people associated with alcoholic beverages who was cursed by the prophet to sleep on him. So then um, you have to think a bit more and see if you can come up with two out of ten of the possible solutions. So that's just another game that I wanted to suggest as well. Jazakallah Khair for that suggestion, Sister Sadiqa. Um, back to the uh, the other um, games that Sister Hanat suggested, um, Quran Challenge game. Um, that is available on Amazon, as is the Five Pillars game as well, if anyone listening is interested in purchasing um, those games. Um, and they are very, um, like, they've got a lot in them. So with the, um, the Quran Challenge game, there's 600 questions from six different categories. Um, including Quranic knowledge, um, prophets, people, places, message of the Quran, and the 99 names of Allah. So it does cover a lot. Um, and it obviously it is designed for kids, so it'll be very simplified. But um, I think the Five Pillars is um, marketed also as a family game, so it's, it might be a bit more um, complex. I'm not 100%, but yeah, if um, anyone's interested, they are available to purchase from Amazon. Jazakumullah yes. I think it's 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 wonderful. I mean, fifteen years ago you could go on Amazon and not find <laughs> find what you're looking for that is Islamic. Uh, and now mashallah, we have everything. It it seems like we have everything at our fingertips, isn't it? Alhamdulillah Um so really we have no excuse not to read or seek Islamic knowledge. Um, you know. Uh, and I think even the games that were mentioned, some of them may be a challenge for even adults. You know, I remember doing one of the games and I, I, I wasn't the winner. I don't think so. <laughs> so, you know, when you do these things with your children, alhamdulillah, you know, it, uh, a lot of good biramatalai can come from it. So I think, uh, alhamdulillah, we have discussed a lot on the show today. The topic uh, has been Islamic faith and basics. Uh, we hope the suggestions we have given to you are useful and will you know, encourage you, stimulate you to go and read, think and talk more and look into uh, um, books and sources of knowledge and information to renew your faith, to, to buttress your, your basic skills with regards to the practice of Islam. We have no excuse not to read or seek knowledge. Um, remember that you can listen to the Read Show live or recordings on Facebook and YouTube. Jazakumullah khair and kathiran to my co-presenters and guests Amna uh, and Siddiqa. And to you all, the audience, for listening, commenting, sharing the show with everyone who may benefit. Please join us again tomorrow, same time, for the next episodes of Reads, when we'll be discussing our Ramadan now. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Wa la ila ila anta wa nastaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh